Hello and welcome to another episode of All Things Real Estate. As always, I am your host, Kyle Seabeth with Century 21 Real Estate, serving Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. Unlike, I should say like, every other show, today we have a special guest, and I will botch your last name, Waldy, my man Waldy. I have known you for a long time. Waldy, who are you and what do you do? So, hi everybody, and Kyle, thank you for the invitation for uh, the show today. Uh, so my name is Waldi Ripor. I'm a mortgage uh, loan officer at Main Street Home Loans, um, and I've been on the business uh, about two years and a half now. So Waldi, I met you how many years ago? Would you guess? Oof, uh, I would say three or four years ago. Yeah, I was um, gonna say five. Yeah. Probably yeah, five. Yeah. I would say so. Well, oh, actually, I, yeah. I probably met you five years ago. Oh yeah, at yeah. Least we, when we you actually, bought your first house. Yeah, we actually <clears throat> met, I uh, think, 2016 or 2017. Yes, yes. So yeah. I met you about five years ago. You were doing bank, you were a bank teller uh, at, or a, a personal banker. Personal banker. Personal banker at Citizens? Yes. On Broad? On Broad Street. On Broad. Waldy's a personal banker on Citizens at Broad, I'm mean, on at Citizens on Broad, and he and I kind of connected. You were trying to buy a house, you got a house, you backed out of one, you looked at another one, you were like kind of finding one and you finally found one. Yes. You finally bought a house a couple years, took you like a year or two, you bought a house, cool, done. You that whole time were like, hey man, I want to get into this game, right? You were kind of like, I, I don't know how, I don't know what I want to do, I'm on the fence. And then you started to meet with other lenders, right? You started to meet with other mortgage people and you're like, ah, I might do this, right? Is that yes. kind of how it went? Yes. So you met with a bunch of different mortgage people, ended up landing at, main, at, at what at the time was First Home, right? First Home <clears throat> Mortgage, yes. Landed at First Home Mortgage, now, now Main Street Home Loans, right? Main yes. Street Home Loans. You're, you were just telling me this, you're two years in. So is this year three? This is year three. First year, he helped 29 clients get a mortgage. 26. 26. 26, yes. Second year, helped 100 and how many? 115. Guys, let me stop you for a minute. <laughs> this guy went from 30 clients to help to almost 120. That's 4X. He increased his business four times and helped four times as many people as the year before. And this year, I guarantee he's on pace to probably go over 150, right? I agree, yes. Now, I got to ask you, somebody with that kind of success, that's what we call hockey stick success. What hockey stick success is, is when it goes up and to the right. That's what a hockey stick looks like, right? Yes. Up and to the right. So with that, what do you attribute to all your success? Um, so I think it's my, my goal setting. So I know where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I work hard mm -hmm. I, I, and I put in the time. So, and I try to provide the high class service to every single client, no matter if they qualify or they don't qualify. Um, so I, I have a personal, um, I have a great service when I work with you back in time. Yeah. So, so I felt like I needed to provide uh, a high class service to my clients. So. <clears throat> And, and that's what I believe I, and I work a lot too, so. Yeah, so a couple things I took from that. Hard work, put in a bunch of hours, and provide a customer service level that's really high. Yes. A superb customer service level that they can't get every, because one thing that people need to understand, there's a million Waldies, there's yes. a million Kyles, a million of us, right? And, and literally, there's a million. Loan originators in the country, there's millions. 100% agree. Real estate agents, there's millions. How does Waldy become different? He makes you feel like you're his only client. Yes. He makes you feel like you, all that matters to you is, all that matters to him is you. I try to make you feel like everything that matters to me is you. That's it. That's all it's about. And at the end of the day, we're what I call commodity. And what a commodity is, something you can find everywhere. But the difference between a commodity and a boutique asset, you and I are boutique assets. We carry ourselves at a different level to provide a service level that they're not gonna get everywhere else. So they come back to us, they refer us, they come back to us, their friends use us, their family use us. If they need to refi, they're gonna use you, right? So one thing that I think is awesome is that you did that many, trans you did that many people to help, you helped that many people that you did it without, now think about this for a minute, you did it without having a book of business that you could just eat off the refis. I agree. 
how many loan officers made all their money from refinances in the last two years? Um, wow. Um, I would say almost 90%. Uh, I would say uh, almost all of them. Almost <laughs> yes. all of them. All you had to do was pick up, hey, Jamie, just want to let you know your interest rate's about 200 basis points lower today. Will you refi? Yes, thanks. Hey, Peter, I mean, that's an easy conversation. You're doing this in one of the hardest purchase markets that we've ever seen. And for people that are listening or watching, we are in a situation where the purchase market is so hard. There's no inventory. There's a ton of buyers. Interest rates are really low. People can afford more house than they ever could afford before. What that does is it creates an environment, 10, 15, 20, 30 offers, and then that allows you, it allows me to be in a very stressful situation. We're doing everything that we can. We're doing everything we can and not getting the results that we want. We're putting the time in and we're not getting our clients the houses. We're putting the effort in and we're not getting to that end goal. And I think that's the part where doing 150, serving 150 clients in this market, that's unbelievable. You yeah. should be happy about that. No, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I know <clears throat> I, I exceeded my, my goal for the first year. The second year I, I blew my goal. So, and I'm on track to you know, achieve my goal for this year. So what do you think the real estate market looks like in 2022? Um, so I know there will be more inventory, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe we are started to see more houses coming to the market. Mm -hmm. um, the interest rate, I believe, is going to continue um, just about the same for mm -hmm. at least to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure uh, after the end of the year what's going to happen. Um, but I predict that uh, there's going to be more, uh, more um, houses available for, for buyers to <clears> be <throat> able to find a house. And, and it's going to shift the market. Yeah, I mean, if we see an inventory, so I just, single families alone, right? Single families went from 600 on the market to about 800 right now. So we've seen a 200, a 200 inventory increase in single families, which is great, right? We need that. If we can see a big change in inventory, that shift from being a seller's market here to a buyer's market here yes. should come to this. What that allows, what that allows is more at-bats. That's going to give the buyers more chances to get hits. It's going to give the buyers more chances to get their offers accepted. That's going to give people like you more opportunities to give your buyers opportunities to get houses and fulfill the American dream. And people like me, the opportunity to bring more buyers to people like you that can help approve them. So I think the beauty of this is we're probably at the pinnacle of the worst period for people looking to buy that can change and hopefully change relatively quick. I think we're two years away. I think next year you're gonna see more inventory and then two years from that, it's gonna be crazy. There's gonna be a ton of inventory. We're gonna be trying to get more buyers. So when we get to that point, I'm super excited that we can kind of be in that situation. But right now I would agree with your assessment that inventory will tick up, rates will stay somewhat relatively low and it'll allow people to have a more chance. I agree. So that will allow a lot of uh, new home buyers that are getting into the market, um, find a house. Um, also, the home buyers that I've been looking for quite some time yep. to actually get into a house. <clears throat> um, so the market is probably going to be strong for. One piece of advice to a home buyer right now. You want to tell them one thing, what would you tell them? So, my advice to every home buyer. Uh, meet with your lender first, uh, find out what will be um, your budget to um, afford a house and determine what's ra what house is right for you. Once you find those three things, uh, then, you know, time, tar the time will come for you to find a house. I think that's good. I think is is budget, understand it. Pre-approval amount, understand it, and patience. Those three things should help a buyer be successful in this market. Understand the market, understand your budget, and be patient to understand what you need to get. And I think that's what it's all about. So, Waldy, we've got to conclude this episode, but I appreciate you coming out. I thank you so much. We're almost out of this COVID stuff, so we can rock and roll. We don't have masks on. We're rocking. We're right. here together. That's right. So, everybody, we will see you next week. Thank you.